The following expose is part of the ongoing punishment of disgraced news presenter Arthur Meek. Arthur Meek made his name as the credible, well-loved and wholesome host of the primetime news show, The Week with Meek. Tēnā rā tātou te whānau ki a mihi nui ki a koe. G'day. Ko Arthur Meek a ho. Good evening and welcome. This is The Week with Meek. A mere three weeks ago, The Week with Meek was enjoying sensational primetime ratings and host Arthur Meek was flying high. That was until sex lies and computer-generated effects brought the whole thing crashing to the ground. Okay, let me make this absolutely clear. If there is blame to be apportioned, it is Orlando Stewart's fault. He is our investigative reporter. It is his job to check the facts. It is his job to do stories that are true. He failed on every single one of those counts. And here is the offending Week With Meek story. Okay, everyone, this is as big as it gets. We have Māori terrorists. We have training camps. We have a plan to blow up the Sky Tower. We have... Tino Rangatiratanga gone mad. And this is the fake interview that would make the entire nation weep. So is there anything you'd like to share with New Zealand? I'm going to teach you Pakeha's a lesson and destroy your monument to capitalism and greed. This is huge! I've uncovered a terrorist mastermind and the shit is going down live tonight! On the surface of it, it smelled good. Listen, it was a semi-accurate recreation. It was complete bullshit. Complete and utter bullshit. Even Orlando will admit that after a few drinks. It was complete bullshit. Orlando's badly computer-generated sky tower collapse caused only mild public panic. But authorities still demanded the week with Meek reveal the identity of the terrorist mastermind. Orlando refused and police swooped, confiscating secret interview tapes. What they discovered would annoy everyone that saw it. The Māori terrorist mastermind wasn't a terrorist. He wasn't even Māori. It was Week with Meek Lifestyles reporter John Ong holding a patu. Oh, awesome. TVNZ bosses were furious, releasing this terse statement. The Week with Meek has misled the public and, in effect, acted the news. That's Campbell Live shit, and we don't do that on this network. A New Zealand current affairs show can survive in acting the news scandal, but what happened next would sound a death knell for the week with Meek. In a cynical attempt to make himself look good, Arthur Meek offered up Orlando Stewart as a sacrificial scapegoat. But with his job on the line, Orlando bleated to the Sunday papers. In a sensational scoop, Orlando claimed he was glad he made up the news and that the real lie was Arthur Meek's personal life. And then he dropped the bombshell that would change everything. Arthur Meek, the star of dozens of women's magazine puff pieces with high society girlfriend Charlotte Collins, was in fact systematically screwing every female member of the Week With Meek crew. Everyone but me. I mean, he tried it on, but I just find him repulsive. Nothing personal. Worse still for Arthur, Orlando spilled the beans that gorgeous Week With Meek reporter Natalie Medlock was pregnant with Arthur's love child. Orlando had snookered Arthur, handcuffing them both to a cinder block at the end of Career Suicide Pier. Arthur had little choice but to admit everything, live. Have I had sex with my staff? The answer to that is yes, I have. Was it embarrassing when Orlando Stewart made it public? Yes, it was, particularly for the woman involved. Natalie Medlock. We were at a media conference on journalistic ethics when, out of the blue, booze and sex became involved. The nation took it badly. The network took it badly. My girlfriend Charlotte took it really badly. Unfortunately, it was one scandal too many for the network, and they canned The Week With Meek. Look, everything had turned to shit so fast, but as much as I wanted to fire the lot of them, contractually my hands were tied. So I went for a group punishment. I moved the whole team from prime time to the graveyard shift, and I sent that news acting bastard Jong Ong on an extended OE. What well, the pictures can't describe here is the smell. For me, this new show presented the opportunity of a lifetime. I couldn't have been happier. Arthur cried a lot when I told him he was out of prime time. He came into my office and threw up everywhere. 
But I told him, Arthur, you've made your beard so lion it. Take your worst enemy, take the woman carrying your love child and make a news show. It's called Feedback and if it rates really well, you might get your old primetime job back. If you screw up even once, I'll kill you. So Arthur, I hope viewers enjoy Feedback and record numbers, because if they don't, you are finished. And you'll never work in this town again. Arthur Meek's new current affairs show, Feedback, will commence in three seconds. Three, two, one. Arthur Meek. Leander Tokes. John Ong. Natalie Medlock. And Orlando Stewart are Feedback. Hello, I'm Arthur Meek. Leading the news, lies and untruths have become the victims of a vicious fact attack here on Feedback. Coming up... I turn up the heat live from the Wellington mime scene. I have an extreme crime live from Queenstown. And I'm live from Napier with a swing ball update. But first, John Ong live from the Middle East. Thanks, Arthur. I'm here in the Middle East where a bloody battle is taking place between American troops and Taliban insurgents in Afghanistan, a mere 1,000 miles from where I'm standing here in Dubai, fighting his... Everybody, everybody get down! Everybody get down! Everybody... John. <laughs> John, are you OK? <laughs> We're going to cut live to an ad break now. We'll see you soon with more feedback. And we're clear. John. Are we off air? Yeah, what happened? It was just a car backfiring. It was really loud and gave me a fright. And... Have you pissed your pants? Yeah. Do you, think, do you think anyone noticed? Yes, everyone noticed it. Clean up. Orlando. Yes, Arthur. You just teased yourself live from Napier and Queenstown. Where the fuck are you? Who cares? It's dark. No one can see where I am. Well, why am I all the way over here? Can I come home? No, you can't. And Orlando. Yes, Arthur. Please, I am begging you. Please stop making up the news. If you say you're in Napier, can you be in Napier? And if you're live from Queenstown, can you please be in Queenstown? I can't do that, Arthur. Why? I'm in Wellington! <laughs> we're, we're screwed. Back in three. You are back with feedback. Later on, we have some hard-hitting facts on New Zealand's only real news. But now for a news bomb. Boom! Thanks, Arthur. The war on drink driving entered a new phase today when police combined forces with leading car and condom manufacturers to launch a large prophylactic car sheath. You're looking at Kiwi Ingenuity at its best. This is the car condom, the homegrown invention that's coming to a drunk driver near you. The drunk driver slides it over their vehicle before driving home from the pub. It limits the car's speed to 15 kilometres an hour. The thick rubbery sides cushion against impact and a loudspeaker in the tip warns people to stay clear. Intoxicated driver. However, critics claim the sheath only encourages drink driving and funding will be better spent on programs promoting complete drunk driving abstinence. Look, we have to be realistic. People are always going to drive drunk and using our sheath makes driving under the influence a safer experience for all involved and it's fun. Even police are getting into the DIC spirit. Uh, Derek Ewer, 14 Trojan Crescent. Cheers. Right. You know, I'm into my uh, sixth beer, and um, and um, yeah, I, I feel I feel fine driving home. No potential harm to anyone at all. This is one way street here. Shit. Is. No one is arguing that drunk driving isn't fun, but opponents are warning of the potential social costs of car condoms, including used car condoms being discarded in graveyards and playgrounds, and that's if booze drivers use them at all. Yeah, I'm pretty drunk. I've got one of those things in the back, but they're really hard to get on. You can't even feel the road. Um, I just prefer it raw. While some people debate the pros and cons, the public are voting with their wallets. Yeah, it launched last week and we've already got 3,000 responsible drunk drivers using the sheath. 
Uh, this has far exceeded our most, uh, our most optimistic predictions. Uh, we're now working closely with the, with the Ministry of Education on developing a, a larger version for, for school buses. Well, I've just had one more for the road, and I, for one, won't be needing a taxi. I'm Leander Totes for Feedback. Thanks, Leander. A-plus reporting there. I envy your rampant credibility. We cross live now to Orlando Stewart for this aggravating report. Hi, Arthur. I'm live in Napier. When Neil Tronson was a boy, he loved swing ball. Yeah, well, I used to play with my brother years ago until he died. But um, it's something I've always had a real passion for. I want to share that with my kids. So when a cheap swing ball set went on sale at the warehouse, he leapt at the chance. Caught it down here and set it up in the front yard. And the kids just loved it. I don't think I've ever seen them so happy. But then the council stepped in. The swing ball set was found to be in breach of building standard codes and Neil Tronson was ordered to take it down. I think it's absolutely bloody ridiculous. But the council say they're just following rules. The rules have to be consistent for everyone. And let's not beat around the bush here. This is a two metre high structure with an unpredictable orbiting projectile. It's a serious health and safety concern. Look, whatever the logic of the situation, we have procedure. Further down the track, maybe he can erect a swing ball set. But first, the council needs a large amount of paperwork, a large amount of money, and a large amount of time. Feedback paid the money, filed the paperwork, and then it was time for me to pay another visit to the Tronson. Well, Neil, we've got some good news for you. You'll be getting your swing ball set back, and it's been erected exactly to council building standards. So there'll be no more problems. That's great. Thank you very much. Shall we have a go? Yeah. Neil Tronson, a Napier man who fought a sea of red tape and came out smelling of roses. Back to you, Arthur. Thanks, Orlando. Still to come, we cross live to Wellington where it's sexy, silent sex with the smouldering Natalie Medlock and the sexiest mime you've ever seen. And then we're off to Queenstown, the extreme capital of the world, where Orlando Stewart has an extremely unlikely tale to tell. All that and more when you come back to Feedback. Nice work, guys. Everyone happy? No. 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 Box of birds. God, Natalie. Natalie, can you hear me? Yeah. You look cold, hun. Have you got a scarf or something you can chuck on? I can look after myself, thanks. Hey, Natalie, you should have asked him to chuck something on his wanger. Then maybe you wouldn't be able to duff. <laughs> well, Lando. Yes, Arthur? I want you to know that despite everything you've put me through and the damage that you've done to me personally and to my career and to my show, our show. I want you to know that despite all of that, I don't hate you. Good for you, mate. I did hate you, but I've had time to think about it and I just don't think anger is going to help us move forward and be the team that we need to be if we're going to patch things up with the public and in our personal lives. So even though I'm gutted by what you did, I want you to know that I've found it in my heart to forgive you. Thanks, Arthur. Hear that, boys? Scott free. <laughs> Back in three. Welcome back, this is Feedback, and where in the world is Orlando Stewart? I'm live in Queenstown, the adventure capital of the world. Irish extreme tourist Neil McGill. I've done bungee, done whitewater rafting, done you know a bit of skydiving. Neil's an Irish tourist who thought he had done every extreme sport Queenstown had to offer. That was until he spent an afternoon in a pub telling the locals just how extreme he thought he was. Extreme I am, right? And they're all loving it. The whole group of them on tenter hooks. They're loving it. After several hours of listening, a local invited Neil to join him behind the pub for a demonstration of an extreme sport he'd invented just for Neil. 
With zero overheads and a guaranteed fear factor, this sport seems destined to become as Kiwi as bungee jumping. But there's no pleasing this bud sucker. The corn just pushed me off a cliff. This local is now a wanted man. The Irishman is pressing charges, and Tourism New Zealand have nominated him for the 100% Pure NZ AJ Hackett Award for Extreme Innovation. Go Kiwi! I'm Orlando Stewart, live in Queenstown for feedback. Orlando Stewart, you will be the death of us all. If I had a dying wish, it would be a sexy story from Natalie Medlock. Natalie, you got a sexy story, something titillating to send us to the land and nod, something sexy? Yes, Arthur. I am here in Wellington where a new show premieres tonight at Downstage Theatre. It's a one-man performance that has high hopes of relaunching mime as a popular spectacle for the common man. It's been a long road to the top for New Zealand's premier silent actor, Byron Jacobs. Well, I was six years old, uh, watching TV with my mum and dad. Um, and on the screen popped up Marcel Marceau. I was transfixed. He just looked so cool. While Byron is a huge fan of classic mimes such as Stuck in a Box, Umbrella in the Wind and the Enduring Pulling on a Rope, he is well aware that mime is on the wane and he puts the blame squarely on his hero, Marcel Marceau. Brilliant as he was, Marcel never crossed over to the mainstream because well, he was never allowed to give the people what they wanted to see. Byron's changing all that with a revolutionary show featuring groundbreaking new mimes designed to appeal to the masses. And now for an exclusive glimpse of Byron Jacobs' new show, The People's Mime. I think Byron's mimes are fantastic. I mean, they're confronting artistically, but they're also something the average man in the pub can relate to. This is going to herald a whole new era in mime. I think pretty soon, we're going to start seeing teenagers enacting Byron's mimes to insult their friends. You won't be able to uh, walk down the street without seeing someone hanging out of a car, doing one of Byron's mimes, or in the classrooms, or in the playgrounds. I think, you know, it's just going to be a great thing for mime as a whole. Byron might be silent, but the praise is deafening. Preview audiences have been enthralled. The listener awarded the People's Mime an unprecedented five stars, and the Dominion Post described it as mesmerizing. So thanks to Byron, much of the damage Marcel Marceau did to mime has been undone. With Byron's show, The People's Mime sold out two weeks in advance, it really looks like mime is back where it belongs at the top of the box office. I am Natalie Medlock for feedback. Back to you, Arthur. Top shelf, Natalie, looking really good down there in Wellington. And that is us, the first show in the new slot. Some great stories, some good stories, and thank you, Orlando, as well. Feedback is back next week, so good night, sleep tight. I'm Arthur Meek, and New Zealand, make some news. Arthur! Arthur! Yes, Orlando? I've got something breaking live from Napier. Can it wait? No, it can't. Arthur! I'm live from Napier with a shocking update to our swing ball story. This is a Napier swing ball tragedy. Neil Tronson's prize kit has been squashed with Napier Nanny State Council regulations to blame. For more information, go to my breakfast blog, muck.org.nz, or ring John Key direct on 0800 83 83 83. Look at Neil Tronson blubbing. Tragic. I'm Orlando Stewart live from Napier for Feedback. Thanks Orlando, I'm Arthur Meek, this is Feedback. Good night, sleep tight in New Zealand, make some news. And we're clear. Shit Orlando, that was bloody tragic. 
not really. It didn't really happen, did it? No, it didn't. So you have learned nothing from this, have you? No. <laughs> so Natalie, what are you doing tonight? Well, I'm in Wellington, so I might as well go out. I don't think that's a good idea. I think you should get some rest. Oh, you do. Well, I've been asked out to that sex mime and now I'm definitely going. You can't go to a sex mime in your condition. Yes, I can. It's not a date, is it? Yep. I'm taking the little lady and her tum-tum to a sex mime. Come on, let's go. Natalie? Natalie? Hey, honey! Scott free! <laughs> Arthur? Arthur, are you there? I'm pissed off, John. Arthur? Can I come home? No. Please? No. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand On Air.